Today, I want to talk about two abstract street photography techniques that can help you build out your body of work and add some variety in there. These are inspired by the work of Ernst Haas and William Klein. The first of these techniques is photographing textures. This can really help build out your body of work when it's viewed in its entirety. At least that's the impression I got when looking through the books I own of Ernst Haas work. And today I'm in Shinjuku to try this out for myself with a roll of Lomo 400. You might think the photos like this are kind of weird or not exactly your thing. So what's the point of taking these in addition to the normal street photos we take anytime that we go out? One of the great things about street photography is finding beauty in mundane, everyday things. So this technique can just take that one step further. Experimenting with different types of photography expands our ability to engage with the world around us. While shooting textures is one of the more extreme examples of this, it definitely takes the adage that one man's trash is another man's treasure and runs with it. If you're like me and you like to focus on scenes instead of subjects most of the time in your street photography work, this is a way you can focus on more of those small details and build out understanding of what the scene really is to your viewers. Additionally, this is just another way to fully engage with street photography. Personally, I want to try every kind of street photography. And if you do too, you should give this a try. These are some of the photos of William Klein and Ernst Haas that made me want to try this technique out in the first place. But there's really endless textures that you can go for on the streets that can be used for this. The photos of rain or steam on windows, puddle shots, the pavement on the sidewalk. I also chose to shoot rust and metal. any signage I could find. Shooting through textured materials. Working with any cloth that I came across. And the second technique I wanna focus on with this roll of film is shooting reflections. I got a number of photos that I really like a lot from this roll of film when using this technique. So here's what I found works best when shooting reflections. First, and what might be obvious, is to avoid just flat, boring reflections. If it's not giving you anything that looks more interesting that can't be done by just flipping the image horizontally in post, what's the point of taking that photo? The weirder the shape of the reflection, the better in my opinion. The chrome on the outside of these side view mirrors of this van is a good example of this because of how it warps and distorts the image that's taken through it.
This piece of thick plastic on the outside of this bar is another good example. The way it bends and folds creates unique reflections you might not get elsewhere. The next tip is to give new meaning to the mundane. This van and the storefront are two things I would never consider photographing independently, but when combined because of the distortion caused by the shape of this windshield, it creates a pretty cool reflection and decent end result. Another technique that I found worked pretty well is using multiple reflections at once. The storefront had a sliding glass door that when it was open created two different layers of reflections at the same time that resulted in a kind of trippy effect. Combining textures and reflections is another thing to consider. The shot that I got isn't really the best example of that, but it's a good starting off point. If you got anything out of this, please like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, keep developing.